Tyler Holinsky's parents, Mark and Kim, revealed to the Today Show and Sports Illustrated their son had CTE. The Mayo Clinic requested Holinsky's brain for testing, and it revealed the degenerative brain disease that has been linked with football players. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Jane McCarthy, our sports director, Darnay Tripp, joining us for this story. Now, Tyler's diagnosis was stage one, so it was on the low end of the scale, but doctors told the Holinskys their son had the brain of a 65 year old, which they said, of course, was really hard to take. Yeah, we'll have more on CTE a little bit later. But one of the questions people have asked since Holinsky took his life is whether there were any signs that a young man known for being so funny, positive and outgoing could be battling with suicidal thoughts. Kim told the Today Show there weren't any verbal signs to WSU or to the family that anything was wrong, but there were subtle changes in behavior as detailed in the Sports Illustrated piece, being less responsive to calls and texts Kim even texted her son at one point asking if something was wrong. Mark said, quote, the reality is we missed it and we let him down. The slight changes in behavior began after WSU's loss to Arizona, where Helensky played the majority of the game that the Cougs ultimately lost. He told his brother Kelly that one particular hit in that game, quote, rocked him and he struggled to cope with the lost feeling like you let the team down. And one of the problems with CTE is that it can't be diagnosed if a person is still alive. Holinsky's no doubt experienced hard hits at various points throughout his football career, which is believed to have contributed to his CTE. Mark and Kim, his parents, addressed the role of football and their outlook on the game when they spoke with our Amanda Rowley. Amanda? Well, Mark and Kim Holinsky, Tyler's parents told me it came as a shock to their family when they learned he had CTE. They say they tried to expose their three sons to all different types of sports, but they always ended up gravitating to football. In fact, their youngest son, Ryan, is 17 and still plays football. I asked Mark and Kim if they still support that after learning about Tyler having CTE. They say it's Ryan's decision. If he were 12, Mark and I always say, we would make the decision, right? It's, it's He's still our child. We'll sign away or we won't sign away. If he were 10, very easy decision, but it's his decision now. So that really what all we could do is educate him, educate ourselves, and support his decision. Ryan's response I thought was extremely well thought out, which came out sort of maybe vulgar, but I don't, I don't give a rip. I love this sport. I know it, that it's a risk, and to him, this is a lifestyle and a career choice. Now, on social media today, after the Holinsky family shared Tyler's diagnosis on the Today Show, I noticed the same question coming up. Does the family blame football for Tyler's death? So I asked Mark and Kim this. Do I blame uh, football? I don't. If, if Tyler had died on the field of, you know, severe injury, um, I wouldn't blame football because that was part of the risk in playing the sport. If we had something that we could take our anger and frustration and sadness out, football would be a very easy target, um, and it might make us feel better for a little bit. But I don't think that's the I don't think that's the proper response. So now, instead of focusing on blame, the Holinsky family tells me they plan to continue their efforts to destigmatize mental illness through the Holinsky's Hope Foundation. And you can find more information about Holinsky's Hope by visiting CREM.com. Amanda Rowley, CREM 2 News.